And I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the recent work that we've done. Uh, so some things about version profiles and uh, Azure Bootstrapper, which has to do with Azure Stack, which just entered TP3 uh, not too long ago. Um, uh, I'm going to talk about our change to, to Markdown-based help. I'm going to talk about some of the new things we've done to improve compliance around static analysis and some of the things, uh, some of the baby steps we've taken there. Um, and then I'm going to uh, go in a little bit into our, uh, into our uh, gallery support. So to start with, uh, let's talk a little bit about version profiles. So basically, what is this about? The idea is that we have multiple different Azure clouds. So Azure Global is what most people use most of the time, but there are also sovereign clouds in the US, Germany, um, and China. There's also, uh, there's also uh, Azure Stack. Uh, and all of these things have slightly different capabilities. And when that comes to Azure Stack, that's especially pronounced. So version profiles are a way of managing um, the different service capabilities on these, on these different uh, in these different environments uh, and giving you still a directed interactive experience and enabling you to write scripts which are targeted for a set of these clouds, for example, Azure Stack and Azure Global or Azure Stack um, and an Azure Sovereign Cloud. Um, and uh, let's see, what else? Anything else I should say about version profiles? Let's just get into the demo, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the, the, the version is different. So there's the, obviously the Azure Global is cutting edge. It's got the latest and greatest all the time. The sovereign clouds lag a little bit. So they're generally about an API version behind for about a month. Yeah, they're not just separate regions. They're actually like separate deployments. Yeah, so this, this is different than the regions in, 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 the regions in Azure where you have like West US, East US. You've got the different regions in, um, the different regions in, uh, in Europe and Asia. Um, Australia, you know, all the, Brazil, all of those. Those are all the same. Um, what, what we're talking about here are the sovereign clouds where because of like data sovereignty issues, people who do banking, that sort of stuff, need to actually have all of their, their data resident in that country. And so we have that for US government, we have that for uh, Germany. Um, China is obviously, its own, is obviously its own thing. And then Azure Stack is a way that people can actually take Azure to the on-premise, to, to the on-premise world. So. Yeah, it's yeah. But basically, once a, once a version is supported in Azure, it continues to be supported. So if you if you target one of those slightly less than than the latest and greatest, it's going to work in it's going to work in Azure. Just I didn't quite hear. Could you? Yeah, the different sovereign clouds are actually physically different locations, um, and like I said, they exist for things like data sovereignty rules in certain in certain places. Um, so they're they're not they're, they're they're not part of the contiguous Azure. They have their own portal. Um, their own portal, your, their own set of URIs, their own, uh, their own management stuff, where all the Azure regions that are part of Azure Global all use the same portal and uh, resource manager experience and all of that stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sure. Um, so basically what we've, what we've done is that each of, these, each of these sets of service capabilities for a, particular, for a particular service are matched up with a module version. 
Um, and version profiles help you to manage that. So basically, what each, each service will support a set of version profiles, and then a set of version profiles map, maps to a set of Azure PowerShell modules. And this bootstrapper module, um, we have to allow you to download and remove and update and, and load up the, the version profile for the, for, for the particular, for the particular uh, Azure that you want to target. Um, so right here, I've got two different windows open, and this one, um, I'm going to use the I'm going to use the the base command that here it would help if I could spell. Uh, yes, it would really help if I could spell. All right, there we go. So use Azure on profile is kind of the base command that here, and what this will do is it will check to see if I have the modules for a profile installed. It will ask me if I want to install them. If I don't, um, and if I do, it will load them up in this session. So I get to choose between a set of profiles right now. Um, we have a profile for this 2017 profile, which is for Azure Stack, and then we have latest. So in this one, I'm going to use the 2017-0309 profile, and now that's all loaded. And one of the things that I can do with this is, like I said, I get a directed interactive experience for the capabilities that are available here. Um, and one of the things that's available in Azure Stack is kind of an older version of the storage service. So I'm going to try creating a new storage account. Um, and as you see, I go through this, I can set up the resource group name, and I'm going to give it a resource group name. I can set up the storage account name, as you would expect. Um, I can set up, oh, my favorite thing about tab completion, um, storage account type, um, and the uh, location, obviously. Um, I can set tags, and, and then after that, pretty much, um, this is just standard parameters. So these are sort of the capabilities that I have, and I can just go ahead and create that storage account. Um, now, in this other window, at the same time, I can use a different profile. So if I do use Azure RM Profile, and in this one, I say latest, then I get that. And now if I look at creating a storage account here, the directed experience actually gives me some of the new capabilities. So, just give this a name. If we go through this, so you can see that this becomes different. So I have a SKU instead of a type. And um, I have the location just like I did before. But then I, I have a kind, so I can choose between just a blob storage account or a regular storage account. Um, I can choose an access tier, whether it's hot or cool. Um, I can set up a custom domain name. I can enable encryption service for like Blob or, um, or other services. So, and I, I, I get this directed experience that shows me the capabilities that are, that are there in that profile. And I can just go ahead and create that storage account. And this also represents, these are, these are both targeted at Azure. So you can see that these, these profiles continue to work. Um, none of these service versions have, have ever been deprecated. So um, once I t if I target a profile for my least common denominator, it's going to work in Azure Global as well. And that's how we can uh, write scripts for this kind of stuff. So while that's going, let me just show you what else we can do with this. Uh, so if I get the commands there, you can see that in addition to being able to use a module, I can actually um, get the profiles that are available. So I can, if my tab completion will ever take over. Thank you. So um, I can list all the available profiles, or I can just list the profiles on this machine. Um, so I can do this, for example, and I could also um, I can also install, remove, update the modules associated with with either one of the with any of the profiles that I have installed. So that's that's sort of Bootstrapper in a nutshell. Um, right now, this just this module is shipping on PowerShell Gallery. Um, it shipped as part of the TP3 version of Azure Stack, um, and it's just a separate script module at this time. The idea is that this is going to move into the what's available just with all the Azure the Azure PowerShell modules. All right. So next, um, Markdown help. 
So uh, how, many people have, how many people here have written command lines and used Plat EPS for their help? One pro, okay. Um, well, the, <laughs> the, idea, the idea behind Plat EPS, um, this is now what the PowerShell core team's using for their documentation as well, so we're kind of all standardizing uh, on this. Um, the idea is to kind of move help into a format that's more what you see is what you get. So when you edit it, it's a lot, it's a lot more obvious what it's gonna look like when someone does get help. Um, to get the help for your commandlet. Um, so what it does is it gives you markdown, which is sort of just this lightweight, ju just this lightweight markdown language that gives you minimum formatting. Um, so the help goes in, in markdown and then that gets compiled into the XML help that gets used with, with commandlet. So we have moved totally to markdown help in our repo. Um, and so this makes it easier for, uh, for people to uh, actually associate the help with commandlets. It means that the help that we have in our repo is used both for, so those markdown files are used both to generate the XML help in PowerShell, and they're also used for the reference documentation that you see on azure.com. Um, and, uh, uh, and also what we've found is that we get a lot more contributions because we have this markdown help. So we've had a lot of very helpful people come in and correct spelling mistakes and add examples to our help. Um, so we found that our help is getting lots and lots better since we started, uh, since we started doing that. Um, another big push that we have is towards being more, uh, being more compliant with PowerShell norms. So Azure PowerShell is pretty old as a module. Azure PowerShell's been shipping for more than five years. Um, it's been open source for more than, for more than five years. Um, and some of the things that we, we, have, we have some things that we inherit from, from legacy that aren't exactly necessarily the PowerShell way to do things. We've uh, done a lot of work this, we have a lot of work left to do, but we've done a lot of work this year in sort of making that better. One of the big things we do is a lot of static analysis um, as, uh, as, as new commandlets get added. Um, so one of the biggest things is that we have like standard support for confirmation should process, which should be like table stakes for doing commandlets anyway, but now we have it. Um, we also have more of a standard commandlet signature. Um, so things that where we have similar concepts, they're all gonna have similar parameter names. Um, and uh, we also are checking to make sure that everybody has help. Um, and coming up, uh, checking to make sure that there are all of the sections of help that everybody would expect to see in a good PowerShell help document. Um, and lastly, we have checks for breaking changes because we like to have strict control over the breaking changes in our modules. We want, for you using Azure PowerShell, you should be able to keep using your scripts until we tell you months in advance, this thing is gonna change, and then when we actually ship a breaking change, we will show you what's gonna, what, what exactly changed and how you change your script. So um, to, to comply if, if you need to. Um, so uh, we have a breaking change release actually coming up uh, for the build conference in May. Um, and you can expect to see a migration guide going out with that which will give exact examples of what you, what you need to change in your scripts. Um, and that's been a big thing that we've done. So the last thing that we, uh, the last thing is that we're shipping on PowerShell Gallery now as our primary means um, of shipping the modules. So this is how we expect people to acquire our module. Um, and I'm gonna show just a little bit about that. So if we go look, let's go find the PowerShell gallery. Look at that, it's the first thing. What do you know? I was lucky. Um, so inside the PowerShell gallery, if you look at any of our modules, let's go look at like compute, for example. Do, do, do. So if you look, we've made a lot of improvements here from when we, when we started. We've been on PowerShell Gallery for over a year. Um, we, were, we were kind of early in getting this. So one thing that we're doing, you can see that we have individual release notes um, for the module. So you can actually, you can actually see what changed in each, in each thing. We have fully all the commandlets that are available and this is all searchable. Um, in the gallery, and then the best thing about it is that I can actually use PowerShell to find out um, about this stuff that's in the gallery. So for example, um, I can go just find um, what's going on with Azure RM.compute, um, and I can see, well, this is the latest version, and here's all this, here's all this stuff um, about that module. So uh, another thing that's kind of cool that I can do is let's say that I wanted to see where managed disks, what modules use managed disks. So I can, I, I have this little script, find module text, which I'll show you in a second, it's very simple. 
Uh, so basically, I'm just looking through the release notes to see where managed disks get mentioned. And you can see, look at Azure RM.compute, uh, the 2.8.0 version, Azure RM 3.5 looks like it fixed a bug um, in managed disks. And then here looks like um, managed disks were actually introduced there. And then for Azure RM.compute, you can see, yeah, here's where we fixed, uh, we updated these two things, and here's where all those, those commands were introduced. So it gives me kind of a cool way to search through it. And this is a very simple script, right? Um, all I'm doing is using find module and just looking across all versions and looking, for, looking inside the release notes for a particular set of text. So it gives you lots of power in terms of finding out, um, in terms of finding out what's in the modules. And actually, let me see one other thing here. And then I'll turn this back over to Aaron. Uh, <laughs> That's one of the things I'll be talking about is some of the like improvements we're making in making scripts and commandlets easier to read, easier to use, things like that. So that's definitely something we could ship with the product. And so here you see. Oh yeah, absolutely. So the, something we're going to be talking about, Aaron's going to be talking about later, is the ways that we're improving the blogging experience. Ways we're improving ways that we're communicating with you. So with that, let me turn this over to Aaron. Hold this guy. Cool. So this, this slide is just for your, your benefit if you've used Azure PowerShell before and you're curious uh, which Azure functionality has come in recently. I just kind of trolled our release notes for the last six months or so on newer features. One of the things you'll notice, especially about Azure PowerShell, if, for example, you've, you've tried out the new Azure CLI 2.0, is that all of the features in Azure PowerShell are like typically tweaks or, or small functionality to existing resource providers. All of the base functionality of Azure is in Azure PowerShell. There's like, they're required to ship functionality in Azure PowerShell, which makes it kind of the first class citizen of automating with, uh, with, with Azure. Uh, so some of the big ones are managed disks. Has anyone created a new VM recently? And you kind of get that, you know, that's, that's nice. It's faster startup time and it just, you don't have to, is there any storage people in here? Okay. You don't have to create a storage account, which is nice. Uh, so uh, also Network Watcher, uh, the, there's storage disk encryption. And then has anyone tried out the Azure stack uh, at all? Yeah. Have you tried out the commandlets and have you been able to deploy it? Oh, cool. You, you, do you work at Microsoft? Yeah. Oh. Oh, well, yes, yes, I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Snover, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we also, uh, one, of the, one of the things that's really nice is we also have some teams who are building upgrade commandlets. So they have features in ASM. They have the exact same feature, you know, ASM is. It's like kind of the old style of, of creating Azure resources. Um, so they, they built commandlets to make that upgrade experience nice and easy. So you just point it at an existing ASM resource and they'll migrate for you. So there's a bunch of other things in here. Uh, I won't cover all of them. Uh, but like, like I said, they're all kind of new functionality to existing RPs. And you can look through our release notes. Yeah, if you want detailed descriptions or commandlet names, things like that, you can search, through the, search for these in our release notes and you'll find every single one of those texts in our release notes because that's where I pulled them from. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's go. Let's go on. Um, so we wanted to talk a little bit about what we're planning for the future. Um, one of the probably biggest asks we've gotten is concurrency support. Right now, we like PowerShell, Azure PowerShell is not concurrency safe. So if you use uh, jobs or workflow, you will probably run into issues if you try to spawn a bunch of jobs and then run the same thing. We have a few non-thread safe. Within the same app domain. Within the same app domain, yes, yeah. If you, if you split off different app domains, then it's totally fine. Uh, but we've had a huge ask for that. Uh, so we've been, that's, that's kind of one of the first things on our list. Uh, and it's, we, we just are gonna test for it and make sure that it works nicely so that everyone's happy. <laughs> uh, 
We're also going to try to improve the credential and profile persistence. So a lot of this we've gotten from other teams, like on our team, so we have a greater team for Azure tools. And some of this kind of stuff we already have in place, so you can log in and everything's good. But if you want to persist automatically, uh, we, we might have some options in the future so that you can just log in and then have those credentials automatically persist. Um, so installer fixtures, this is what I talked about earlier. Has anyone installed via MSI and then via gallery or vice versa? Did it hurt? <laughs> It did well, okay. <laughs> were, were you a little bit sad when they were, you expected it? Okay. that to like our ops team who didn't. They were all confused and they thought I was an idiot. I'm like, no, just read the fucking Yeah. <laughs> so we're hoping to make it so that you do not have to explain it to anyone. The MSI and the gallery install will go to the same place and you won't have these two installs in different locations. One, and, and you're never sure which one got loaded unless you go do get module. And and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are the versions between the two going to be consistent now? I know in the past there were some challenges around that not being consistent. So it's the the fact of the matter will be that they will install to the same location. So installing via MSI or upgrading via uh, PowerShell Gallery will upgrade you no matter what in that one location. So there will be no versioning issues because they'll, all, they'll be in the same place. If you then decide to go back and install via MSI, it'll again be in the same place. Because, because of some of the things that we're talking about, things will probably go to the gallery first, but the versions that you get from the MSI and the versions that you get from the gallery should be the same. Like yeah. Will, will, yeah, is currently, but will continue, continue to be. To be. Uh, and then Mark is going to do a quick demo you're on. Kind of you yeah, you're right. Okay. We'll skip that if you really, really want to see preview. Basically, um, we've had a lot of our service teams. Again, if you've used Azure, you know that there's tons of services, you know, VM, things as big as B VM, and teams as small as, I can't think of a really, really, really small one. Maybe machine learning, they're not, they're not. Yeah, dev test labs, but they're growing. But regardless of size, uh, every team kind of wants to try things out. They want you to give feedback on their new functionality, on their new commandlets, things like that. So we're instituting preview module support, which allows our service providers to ship uh, beta or alpha functionality in a separate module that plays nicely with all of the rest of Azure PowerShell so that you can write scripts against Azure PowerShell plus the new HD Insights feature or j the new Compute feature or something like that. Yes? Do you guys have a plan for getting rid of those? Getting rid of? So I just recently needed Azure AD. It's exactly the same as the release model. Yeah, so that brings up a very good point. First of all, the Azure AD uh, module is not under our purview. Uh, so how they release is, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, how they continue to release, I don't know, but that's really good feedback for us to take as service teams uh, release preview modules we'll make sure to encourage them to remove any preview modules that have become obsolete. What they had to do, because they published the PowerShell gallery, and they put preview in the name. Yeah. Now it's just there forever, as far as I can. Well, you could, you could, you could set it to leave. You could hide them. Yeah. 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 Hide them, so but the question is, is that really what you want to do? Because at the end of the day, the way that it is, they just re they put their release one in their preview branch. So people who are using that are just going to continue using it and it's release quality now. If they ever want to do another preview, they'll do that there. But I'm just saying, ah, think about it. Yeah, no, that's really good feedback that we should take yeah, into and account. What, what, we're, what we're thinking for preview modules is they're actually going to be like a separate module. So there's like, the, there's like the stable module track, and there's. Right, well, that's what, they're, that's what they did. And I would discourage you from doing that personally, just because 
now there's two versions of that module forever. And it's not clear that, like it's never clear whether the preview one is the same as what's released or not. Yeah, or which one is supersedes the other, that's, that's right. So yeah, that's definitely something that we, we will consider. Thank you for that feedback. Yes, but say you have uh, compute 1.0, and then we have compute dot new feature 0 0.1. And then compute dot new feature ends up going into compute 1.1. And then how do you know that compute 0 0.0 or 0 0.1 is kind of obsolete now, right? Compute dot new feature is obsolete now, because all that functionality is in the, the release track, right? So it's something for us to consider as we move forward with preview modules, how to best Yes? So We're going to get ideas. When I'm trying to learn something new, I, I, I kind of go at it from the PowerShell perspective because oftentimes by working through the commandlets, I end up learning a lot about like, how that particular you know, product works and that type of thing. And I felt like I tried that you know, with Azure with the commandlets and that it really didn't work at all for me. And I, spent, I was trying forever to get just a basic VM, just to create one VM. And then in the end, when I never could get it all to work right, somebody told me, oh, well, it's because you have to use JSON templates. And then once I found an article that walked me through that process, I'm creating VMs like crazy, right? And so it's like, is that, I mean, is, there, is, is, is that going to change or? Yes. So. I think this is a great intro to like stuff. Yeah, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about that in, in just a sec, but the, the gist of it is that we recognize that the Azure PowerShell commandlets are, are difficult to use. Uh, a lot of that has to do with internal Microsoft stuff that shouldn't be exposed to you, the customer. So we're working with our service teams and we're working internally to improve that experience. We, the one thing that's great is that we have an Azure CLI that kind of just came out and it's it's much easier to use, which is giving all of us internally impetus to improve Azure PowerShell to the same degree so that you can look at them side by side and the scripts are just as easy to read. Whereas like you said, I'll show you a compute script, like creating a VM. It's hard to read. It's not very uh, user friendly. And most people just end up going to ARM templates to try to alleviate them, alleviate the entire having to understand how those commandlets work. Yeah. And I mean, again, I'm talking as a person who's like, okay, I've never Brand new. this before, right? Exactly. And I just didn't feel like any of the explanations or things that I was reading, you know, to help try to figure that out yeah. were helping me do that. And then some of the stuff that, I, all the stuff that I found that seemed to seem to have a good logical order to it didn't work because those commandlets that, when they wrote that article a year ago, just didn't work the way they did anymore. So yeah. It was just frustrating as hell. I'll, I'll speak to that when we talk about documentation. Our documentation helps with some of those issues. Sorry, one sec. And, uh, but we still want to make the commandlets better and easier to use. Be, if so. You, if you, if you know PowerShell, if you can reflect over a commandlet's parameters, you should be able to figure out how to create a VM. Exactly. So exactly. It is. Yes. Right? It's yep. like you got to create 94 things before you even have a clue yep. about the VM you're going to create. That's yep. It's rage inducing. But <laughs> it, exactly. But this actually shows up in the data. So we see that by far the way that people create resources is using template deployment. And actually, the template deployment experience I think is pretty good. Um, yeah. I mean, we, we, you know, we, we like direction through template parameters on the command line. But creating a VM should be just as easy. It should be a one-liner, and we'll set up the network security group, the NIC, and everything for you. So we're, we're investigating that right now. Our only question is how to best go about that. But that's one of our, and I'll talk about that on the next slide and a demo that I'm doing. That's kind of our goal is to move towards a model where you're like, I want to create a VM, which is a scenario for thousands, if not tens of thousands of people out there, and so that should be one-liner. My scenario is create a VM, one-line create a VM, and I right? I have to go learn about how to get images and what storage accounts I need. Yeah. <laughs> how to open the PowerShell remoting. I mean, that's yeah. So that's like, 
even though we're talking about all of these things that we want to do, that's kind of our, that's the, everything that we're doing is kind of shrouded by the fact that we want to improve the commandlets. So if you've ever used them and you find them frustrating, uh, I'll show you we have an issue where we have discussion. Feel free to talk about or just post on GitHub really quickly. This commandlet or these set of commandlets or this article frustrates me. It should be three lines. It should be one. Things like that. And, now, and then we'll know which commandlets to attack first, which scenarios to go after first. Even though we already do have some idea based on our telemetry data, we, we always like to get more feedback about what we need to attack, where we need to, to make the best strides. Oh, no, it's everybody. It's me, too. <laughs> it's everybody. Uh, and so I'll also do a demo on PowerShell core support. Uh, so I'm actually running a Mac right now, and we're going we're gonna to try to create a web app from my Mac using uh, some basic PowerShell core functionality. And then also the, the runtime will be backward compatible. Uh, and I'm going to let Mark say a real quick words about that. Um, well, yeah, first on the PowerShell core support. So right now there's a set of, there's a very limited set of PowerShell core commandlets. Basically let you do the generic resource manager uh, actions, which you can use to do almost anything, but are even more tortuous than using like an editor. Um, so what this PowerShell core support means is that these typed commandlets for creating VMs and websites and all that kind of stuff are going to be in PowerShell core. Um, that's, a, that's a big push that's happening in the next release or so. Yep. Um, uh, and then for backwards compatible runtime, a lot of, uh, a lot of this problem has, has gone away a little bit, but it used to be an issue that if I installed two different versions of, of, uh, of, the, of the command list that I might have a problem logging into one or the other. There would be some DLL compatibilities. So we're basically making a backward compatible runtime so that I can take one version and run it against another version. I can log in one time and they'll both work. And part of that has to do with the profile work because there'll be different versions loaded. Yes, and it's, it's happening as it's happening, it's part of that, but it's just going to be a good mix for anybody who yeah. installs whatever, whatever version of it. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's next slide it. Uh, so I'll go through some of these really quickly. Uh, like the, so first of all, reduce module size. There are some dependencies that get downloaded for every module. We're going to move that into its own module so that they, like all of the other modules, just depend on that one. And then you don't have to have the same thing copied 50 times or however, what, however 40 something uh, times. And then we'll load the dependencies as part of the runtime so that you don't have to worry about uh, whether you have the right dependencies loaded. And again, that has a little bit to do with some of the profile work that we're doing. Uh, the UI UX improvements are what you were talking about. Like that's, that's, like I said, top of our mind. We understand that some of the commandlet names are not consistent. We're working on that. Some of them are not easy to use. Some of the parameters should have smart defaults. Like if you pass a resource group and that resource gr group is in West US, then why should I also have to pass location? If you don't pass location, we'll just say you probably want the same location as your resource group, things like that. Uh, we also have some other smart defaults that we can use. For example, like most people when they create a VM, if they're just playing around with Azure and they want to get started quickly, they'll use a standard DS1 or a standard DS1 v2. Um, and, and we can make smart defaults like that so you don't have to figure out what are these sizes, why do I care? That's kind of like a nice middle of the road option, not super expensive. Um, and then the other thing is some parameter or some commandlets are not uh, consistent in their functionality. So some of them might list correctly, some of them may not. Some of them may use dash tag as a parameter and some of them may use dash tags as a parameter. So we're also working through all of those same challenges as we look at ways to improve the commandlet usability and experience moving forward. Do you have any other comments on that? That, that last thing is actually fixed in the, it's actually fixed in the latest. If you go to the, the tag version, one, for example? Ah. Cool. But like examples like that, where you see two different parameters and different commandlets, that doesn't make sense, and that's not a good user experience if you're trying out new Azure resources. So, so I was pretty vocal in the GitHub forum around the ASM to ARM switch, and Mark, you and I exchanged more than a few uh, messages on the board, but um, it doesn't seem like we really learned from that experience, because like new command names are approaching like 75 characters long. And you know, we we're, we don't have like a, it's all Azure RM backup service thing of Doom Mark Two, right? Yeah. Um, it, it, so it doesn't seem like collectively we've learned around like usable names. Right? So 
just to be completely honest, a lot of that has to do with the structure of how we build Azure PowerShell. And just with improving the UI, like part of the conversation that we're having right now is how to improve the way we own Azure PowerShell so that we can make those improvements moving forward. So a lot of that is, is based on, unfortunately, bad internals. So, um, just, just out of curiosity, <laughs> are you thinking more aliases for commands? Are you thinking more like a provider model? I'm, I'm thinking um, to use like AWS as a comparison. I spend a lot more time with Azure than AWS. But they've done a relatively good job having, um, like, if it's in this module, it may start with, like, ARM, right? Mm -hmm. Or if it's in Azure Backup, it's all ABU. And then you end up with sort of a, you, a, a shorter net result of a name. Yeah. Saying this service, all the commands for this service might start with something shorter. Got you it. You see that in other things, too. Like, you know, within ARM VMs, for example, they're all AR, ARM, Azure RM VM something. And it really should be, like, ABM something or something that, that takes the, those extra 15 characters out of the name. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, that's good feedback. Like I said, we're actively having a conversation on how to uh, redesign the surface or at, create new modules with a better surface, better names, better parameters. So we'll take that feedback as we work through all of those issues. So shorter names. I think Alias has helped the transition of that, like support both names for a while. Yes. That's for sure. <laughs> Uh, cool. So then, did you have something else to say on that? Okay, cool. Uh, user experiments is something that we're, we're wanting to work towards as well. So kind of with our preview module support, we want to start providing kind of, here's something that we think is a scenario that people use, and we would just publish a module full of experiments of, you know, if you like to, to deploy web apps, how do you like this experience versus this experience? And we'll give you three different commandlets. And if you're really interested in providing feedback to us, we'll send that out. And then you can try all three and say, you know, this experience is better. Okay, this one doesn't give me enough kind of detail in, in what I'm doing. And this one gives me too much detail, things like that. So we plan on trying to uh, run more experiments. Yeah, Mark is telling me to hurry up. Yeah, I need to hurry up. So yeah, experiments. Let's do a quick demo, and that, that'll be that. Yeah, I'll take the, I'll steal that. Oh, oh no. What is this red flashy light anyway? That's the recording of your session. Yeah. Oh, cool. Why is it blinking, though? I accidentally, I accidentally pressed, I accidentally pressed the button. Blinking is, is good. No, blinking, blinking is good. Blinking is good, okay. What? I did not press it. I just I just touched it lightly. <laughs> uh, now I should turn it off, right? <laughs> uh, okay. I think I think we'll. Uh, oh man, we got to flip it over. There we go. Uh, oh, cool. Let's make this real big. There we go. So I have a uh, PowerShell running in uh, Bash on my Mac, or you know whatever they call it, iTerm. Uh, <laughs> so I am not going to exit PowerShell to prove that I'm in PowerShell. I'm going to use that PS to prove that I'm in PowerShell. Although I could be lying because I could change my Bash to look however I want. <laughs> uh, but when you get out of the PowerShell session, it logs you out of Azure uh, PowerShell, and I didn't want to do that. So I'm all logged in and everything. We're good to go. Um, and basically what I'm trying to show here is some of the improvements we're trying to make. Uh, if we, in a second, we'll look at the doc. Actually, we can look at it right now because that's, that's part of my demo as well. We have some documentation on, say, how to deploy a web app from a local Git repository. And as we discussed, that is absolutely ridiculous, <laughs> right? OK, we're, we're creating a group that's pretty standard. Create a plan, OK. Web app is, OK, we're creating a web app, that's fine. Now what do we, configure GitHub deployment, and we're using set Azure M resource, and we have to know the REST endpoint path with Microsoft.web slash site slash config. That sucks. Right. Well, so if, if you're using the, the, there is like a Git Azure published profile if you have the typed command lines. It's just because we're using the core here. 
No, no, no. Oh, this is the, you're right, you're right. Yeah, this is, this is turning right. on right. git deploy. Yeah, so like the web apps team doesn't ship a commandlet to turn on git deploy. That's ridiculous. So, um, That's true. This helps because this, this article kind of tells you up at the top what's going on. There's some good comments, and this one does work, but it's still ridiculous. Like, you shouldn't have this weird grabbing crap out of an XML response, <laughs> right? Like, that's, that's absolutely ridiculous, okay? Uh, and then we set up our remote and then push, push to Azure. So one thing that I wanted to show is kind of two-face two of... You know, what we'd really like to do is run experiments where, uh, do I have Vim in here? Because, oh, cool. Uh, so I just created this little index.html. It says hello. And what we're trying to do is create a better experience where, you know, for example, you could do new AZ web app. And you could, you could if you need to, provide a bunch of, oh, I can't type provide you know, resource group name, location, things like that. Um, but we should provide better kind of like whenever you type location, you should be able to get tab completion for the locations that are available. Now this is just a mock-up, like an experiment that I ran. And so this, the, you know, I just put three of them in there even though there's like 20 or whatever there are. Um, but what we should really be able to do is just do a new AZ web app and give it a name, like something like Aaron's cool testy thing. <laughs> and for example, now the resource group, we're thinking about having an environment variable or something you'd set to just say, I'm working in this resource group today, that's all I want to do. But say you just want to get a web app up there, we can just create a plan for you because you probably want a plan. If you don't have a plan, you probably want a plan. And then why don't maybe we go ahead and get those credentials for you to deploy. And then most people, whenever they use a git deploy, they'll do something like, you know, git remote add Azure and then the, the git endpoint. So I had my kind of, you know, experimental commandlet do exactly that. It ran everything that that crappy one we saw ran, except it's in one line and I passed one parameter name. So now if we take this, I actually, Mark, Mark and I figured out how to get Azure PowerShell to launch Chrome on Mac yesterday, but it, it didn't, it looked weird, so I stopped doing it. <laughs> so now we can see our website, got the hello, and it's all in that one line. Obviously, some of you may have done this before with the many lines, but these are the types of things that we want to experiment with. How can we make it easier? Most people just want to take a folder that they're in and get a web app for it. Okay, cool. So I'm going to just Talk about a few more things. How much time do we have? Let's, let's give me three more minutes. So we talked a little bit about GitHub. Here's our GitHub, Azure slash Azure PowerShell. It, the best way to contact us is uh, on this GitHub page, file issues here, uh, make contributions here, et cetera. We talked a little bit about the help, and that's something I wanted to show. If you're interested, say, say you're on docs, so here we are over on docs, and we're looking at the app service commandlets. Let's do, or let's do new Azure RM VM, for example. Ah, yeah, filter, mm. So like I said, this is some of the new, like, nice, tasty docs work that we've, we're doing. I'm gonna show some of Sean's work as well. Got some good examples, et cetera. Um, but say you find an issue with this or you want to add something, you're like, it would probably help if everyone read this paragraph about creating a new VM. Well, you can actually come over to our repository, uh, find compute. Uh, no, because that goes to the wrong place currently. <laughs> but yes, coming. Uh, but we can find new Azure RM VM. And like Mark said, here's our source of truth. Here's the markdown for creating a new Azure RM VM, right? So we can edit it. You can make a fork, edit it, and improve our documentation, help, help us with, Fred, with improving Fred, our documentation. Edit 
fork. Excuse it, me? It creates the fork for you. If you just yeah, it will create a fork for you if you click this little guy, right, edit this file. Um, and like I said, a lot of the problems that, you, that we talked about, like getting started, this is the new place in Docs. So if you look at Azure PowerShell for Docs, we have all kinds of information on how to install, how to get started. So we create a new VM here. Got about a minute. Oh, we have to end in, in f at the 50? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we also have community stand-ups. So we'll be doing those once a month. Look on Twitter. I'm at TwitchX. So we'll be doing those once a month. Um, if you, I'll leave up our feedback slide. So if you would like to give us feedback, please feel free. Uh, to go there, aka.ms, Azure, Azure PowerShell Summit. All one word. All one word. And if you have any questions for us, we'll just like go to the back and hang out for a little while. Um, cool. Ooh, I should have done a QR code. Oh, that would have been awesome. Thank you. Oh, we're, we're, we're ended. Push the button. It'll stop blinking. It takes like 10 seconds. Okay. That's just what I hear, though. <laughs>